Look, you read the title. Me and you both know why you're here right now. It's because you either want to learn more about what's going on with Deshaun because you don't understand it, or it's because you're waiting for me to make a point that you don't agree with, just so you can complain about it in the comments. But you know what? I don't really care if you're here to complain because your ass is still watching. So let's just get into it. If you don't know by now, Watson has been in the news for quite some time after it came out in March of 2021 that lawyer Tony Busby announced he was filing a civil lawsuit against Watson for alleged misconduct against women, but very minimal details were offered at that time. And things only got worse for Deshaun because after a day, it was reported that two more suits were being filed against him. And this is where the NFL stepped in because now they were opening an investigation into the situation only two days after the very first lawsuit was even made. After, Lisa Friel, the NFL's special counsel for investigations, sent a letter to Busby asking for his client's cooperation in the league investigation. Plus, four more suits were filed that same day. And by the end of the first week into the drama, there would be a total of 14 cases against Deshaun, all coming from Tony Busby. And later in the month of March is when things got juicy, with both sides starting to fire back at each other. But before we get into the juicy drama, how about subscribing to the channel and liking the video because it really helps with the growth. Okay, anyway, let's just get back to it. With Watson's attorneys, mainly Rusty Harden, accusing some of the women of blackmail after Harden's office identified one of the plaintiffs and accused her of previously attempting to blackmail Watson because they were said to have spoken with this woman in January of this year, of that year, and she asked to be paid $30,000 for indefinite silence, while also admitting to the fact that the woman said her encounter with Watson was totally consensual. But Busby and his team came back with some accusations of their own, when they alleged Watson was deleting Instagram messages and trying to reach out and contact those who formerly provided him massages in attempt to settle. Which Harden and his team obviously denied. Why would they admit to that, you know? But by the end of the month, Watson and his team seemed to have caught a break when 18 women voluntarily issued statements in support of Deshaun. And these women have collectively worked with Deshaun for more than 130 times over the past five years. But that's about the last piece of good news Watson and his camp would receive for quite a while. Because at the beginning of April, Houston police started investigating Watson after a complainant filed a report against him on Friday. And at this point, Busby had filed 21 cases against Watson on behalf of women who accused him of sexual assault and misconduct. And a few days later, on April 6th, after the 22nd lawsuit was announced, Major news broke that two of the women against Watson went public with their names and identities. Those being Ashley Solis and Laura Baxley. Both of the women accused Watson of inappropriately exposing himself and touching them with his erect genitals. And things got worse for Watson after the women went public because brands like Nike, Lion Energy, Grocer HEB, and Beats by Dre started dropping their endorsement deals. And by mid-April, a total of 22 women who filed suits against Watson went public. And this would all lead up to a grand jury meeting in regards to Watson on March 11th of 2022, where a grand jury cleared Deshaun of criminal charges related to the sexual misconduct allegations against him in Harris County. And at this point, the civil lawsuits allege and remember, alleged here, because what I'm about to say is gross, so, so very much gross. It's alleged, the civil lawsuits alleged that Watson was, had forced two women to perform oral sex, ejaculated on three women in front of three others, groped four women, kissed another woman unprompted to upon arrival, and 18 of the 22 women said Watson inappropriately touched him with his genitals. 
and only seven days after the grand jury cleared Watson, the Cleveland Browns would trade three first round picks and a 2024 fourth round pick for Watson and a 2024 fifth round pick. And the craziest part of this whole thing with Cleveland is the fact that the Browns gave him a $230 million contract extension after trading for him with everything going on. And that part just blows my mind. But whatever, you do you, Cleveland. And on June 7th of this year, reports came out that Watson had reportedly booked 66 massage therapists in a 17 month period. And this is after news broke that the 24th lawsuit was filed. Later that month, Watson would finally speak to the media for the first time since late March and say word for word, I never assaulted, disrespected, or harassed anyone. And went on to deny sexual misconduct allegations brought him against by more than 20 people. Let me put that into perspective for you. 20 people is larger than a Mexican family. I'm talking all the tios and tias. And seemingly after denying the allegations, 20 of the 24 lawsuits were settled a week later. Doesn't mean he was innocent, just means both sides came to an agreement. And this would all lead up to the decision of the NFL and NFLPA appointed disciplinary officer Sue L. Robinson. And after weeks of deliberation, following a hearing with Watson in July, Honorable Judge Sue L. Robinson came to the conclusion that Deshaun Watson would be suspended for six games in the 2022 season for violating terms of the NFL's personal conduct policy. Though she did condemn Deshaun's behavior and thought that Watson did pose a genuine danger to the massage therapists, the decision by Judge Robinson put the NFL in a terrible situation where on one side they could decide to appeal the ruling and instead have the decision of Deshaun's punishment rest upon the shoulders of Roger Goodell, who would undoubtedly give Watson a much justified and longer punishment. Though that may look good PR-wise for the NFL, what most people fail to realize is that the problem with appealing Judge Robinson's ruling is that this is the first time the NFL and NFLPA are using an appointed disciplinary officer to make decisions like this. Because this was agreed upon in the new CBA, so this would be the first time this is happening, right? And by appealing the decision, the NFL would be setting a bad precedent for this new system because it shows the NFLPA that if a ruling doesn't favor the NFL, then they'll just overrule it and say, screw it, we're gonna go back to the old way and just have Roger Goodell decide the punishments anyway and you might be thinking well why would honorable judge sue robinson even give such a light suspension to watson right if she condemned his actions and called him a genuine danger towards the victims and i think this quote by the judge herself sums up how she came to the decision and when she said the league is attempting to impose a dramatic shift in its culture without the benefit of fair notice to and consistency of consequence for those in the NFL subject to the personal conduct policy. And if you if that made no sense to you and was just jibber jabber and that made like zero sense, basically what she's saying is based on the NFL's previous rulings and how they've treated situations like this in the past, six games is more than enough. She's going based off of the NFL's previous decisions. And she gets that the NFL is trying to push a more dramatic shift and make a stricter policy. She gets that. But the problem with that is that this decision to be more strict has come out of nowhere. And she believes it isn't fair for NFL players for it to be just brought upon them like this. But it seemed as though the public outcry was too much for the NFL as news just broke that they'd be appealing the ruling of Judge Robinson. And this is what I have a problem with. Because I agree with how Judge Robinson came upon her decision, which she did by basing them off of punishments of similar situations in the past. Plus, I think it's so dumb that the NFL could just appeal any of the rulings made by the appointed disciplinary officer and do whatever they want. Like, what's the point of the disciplinary officer if the NFL can just go around them? 
that is why I think the NFL has screwed over Watson. And don't get it twisted. This isn't me being pro Deshaun Watson. This is just me being anti-NFL for the way they handled the whole situation. <sighs> anyway, that's about it. I hope this video gave you a better understanding of what's going on. Because this was a long one. And some of the stuff in here was just whew, so much to talk about. Anyway, see y'all Monday morning.